for swabbing out our instrument, cleaning out the condensation that will collect inside as we play, you're going to need swabs and a vocal brush. The vocal brush is optional or replacing this vocal swab. I have a long silk bassoon swab that's wide. It's a big, big cloth. I also have a much smaller vocal swab. It only gets about that big. I used to use cotton swabs. They clean a little bit more thoroughly than the silk swabs. The silk swabs are less likely to get stuck in the instrument. Both work just fine. When we're taking apart our instrument, we took off our reed first and then we took off our vocal. Right away, we're gonna to wanna to take our vocal and run, a, run our vocal swab through it. Most will have a little bit of a weight on it. We'll put that in the cork side, the larger side of the vocal. And we're gonna let gravity take, our, take the weight through. Once the weight gets to the bottom, we can start rotating so that the chain can fall through feeding the cord a little bit and it should come out the other side. Since this particular swab has extra string on the other side, this one will actually go all the way through and you'll see the swab on both ends where we blow into the instrument and where it attaches to our tenon joint. So I'll run that back and forth a couple times just to make sure we get everything and then keep pulling it out the direction we put it through. And that's the easiest way to clean our vocal. If you have a vocal brush, you'll do the same kind of idea and always being careful not to get the thing stuck. For our body joints, with our main vocal swab, or sorry, main bassoon swab, first we're gonna clean out our boot joint. Our boot joint is also known as a, a U-tube because it's, this is all one tube and these are the two ends of it. The air goes through, makes a U at the bottom and comes back out the other side. With that in mind, we're gonna put our swab in the larger hole. This is again, the bigger swab. There's no weight on the other side, on one side. So we're putting our weight through Putting that in the larger hole. Again, letting gravity take it down as far as we can. Try not to let it, or we don't want it to go too far because then it'll just get clumped at the bottom. But because we know this tube is a U shape, we're gonna make sure that that gets turned around so that as we feed the string through, Theoretically, we'll get that weight to come back out the other side. Since this doesn't have a string on the other side, on the back, it's just going to go straight through. Do that at least twice when you're done playing. The same swab is then going to go through our wing joint. Again, we're going to start at the larger end. This side had our vocal go in. This side went into the boot. So we're gonna start on that boot side, taking the weight, placing it in the hole, letting gravity bring it through so that it comes out the other side and goes through. Again, we'll wanna do this at least twice after we play. If you've played quite a while, there'll be a, quite a bit of moisture on your swab. You'll wanna make sure that if it has one of these long chains that can come off, you wanna take that chain off and run it through the clothes washer every couple weeks, maybe once a month at, at the least frequent, because this is just collecting our spit and condensation. And if it's just sitting in our case, it can become very gross. So you'll either wanna wash it frequently or throw it out and buy a new one. The other things we want to maintain on our instrument is we will want a silver polished cloth 
to just make sure everything stays nice and shiny all the way through. If you have cork joints, you want to put cork grease maybe once a month. And that's gonna be a very thin layer. Just one stroke across and then use your finger to rub it across. If you have string tenons, there's a special wax that we can use and it's gonna go on the same way, a very thin layer on one side and spread all the way across. When we're walking around with the bassoon put together, we're gonna to pick it up the same way we did when we put the instrument together and we're transferring from the floor to the seat strap, grabbing from the top of our boot joint and walking with the instrument vertical. It's a very long instrument and can be precarious to get through doorways. So make sure that when you're going through a doorway, you have it nice and low. You're watching where the bell is so it doesn't hit ceilings and hit door frames.